What is up, everybody? You know I always start this show off by showing love to those companies who help make this podcast possible. We got to pay the bills. First is my friends over at Yellow Jacket. Um, guys, like you, a lot of you know, I've said it before, I have been a tester for this manifold uh, for a long time. I want to say that I got this almost a year ago before anybody ever knew about it. Um, so I had a pre-production version and I now just got the newest one with all the updated software. And I love this thing, man. I love it. And I have every single major manifold that you can have. You, you guys know that I practice what I preach. So I have the new field piece. I have the new, um, uh, I can't think of the other brand. Um, but you, the, the other ones, I, I have them, I've been able to put my hands on them and, and they're all great. So I'm not going to sit here. The whole point of this is not to bash another one, but I really love this Titan max manifold. This thing is built like a tank and it offers all the features that we have come to know and want what we need in a manifold. Now they're not just extras anymore. These are the things that we need to have. And, um, this one has all of it. Uh, one of the biggest things that some of you may not know that this is now compatible with the measure quick app. So I think yellow jacket has done an amazing job with their app itself, but measure quick is tried and true. A lot of people love to use it because they use several different brands of tools. And nowadays it, you don't want to have to spend the money to go, Oh man, I really like this brand, but now I got to go buy everything all over again. Well, you don't have to do that. Now, as long as they connect with the Measure Quick app, you can use a, you know, the Titan Max manifold with maybe a field piece probe that you had and, you know, something from another brand. And I think that that's awesome. And a lot of brands don't tell you that. The fact that Yellow Jacket said that at AHR while me and Rookie were standing there. And he said, obviously, I, that's not something I want to promote. But then again, I want to be honest with people. And I think that that is absolutely amazing. This thing is built like a tank. It's ergonomical, has all the features that we need. And uh, I'm going to make some videos here um, using this thing because I absolutely love it. So what I always say, if any of you are looking to upgrade, you're looking to go buy something uh, for this summer, check out Yellow Jacket. That's all I say. If you're not, not looking for a manifold, then don't buy a manifold. Uh, but if you are, all I ask is you take a look at the... Yellow Jacket Titan Max. I think this thing is amazing, and I have been using this thing um, here a lot lately. Checking out my own system, the new uh, inverter system I put in my home, and uh, absolutely love this. All right, so remember, 75 years of expertise built into every tool. Next is going to be my friends over at Vito. Guys, I, I get it. Vitos are expensive, and not everybody's got a couple hundred bucks to drop on the tool bag. Totally understand. When I first got into the trade, a couple hundred bucks for a tool bag was out of the question. It wasn't happening. Especially some of you out there, you're still building your arsenal. Building your tools doesn't happen overnight. And I get a lot of these apprentices, they get excited. They see all the guys around them with these fancy tools and, you know, nice drills and veto tool bags, and they want it. And that's fine. We want them to want that. The thing is, is you get what you pay for. Stop going to Home Depot and buying those cheap, shitty bags that are going to last you a couple of months and they're going to fall, fall apart. These Vito bags are customized to do exactly what we need them to do in every single facet of the industry, whether it's HVAC, it's plumbing, it's electrical, it's carpentry, you name it. Vito has a solution for you. You can have your, your service bag, your install bag, your rooftop bag, you name it. They have something for every single application, and that bag is going to last you a minimum of five years with their five-year zero downtime warranty. I love these things. This is why I have bought them with my own money and given them away for years now, which is why I'm so happy to finally be partnered up with them to be able to give these things away. Exactly. That promotion ends actually, no, the 31st, not tomorrow, the day after. So if you're going to buy one, go do it. And actually speaking of that, um, I am going to be giving away one of these tonight and the winner is actually in the chat. It's from the last one I did. I wasn't able to make a video, but I did it fair and square. And, um, you guys will be happy with the winner. I'll announce that as soon as the show starts, but two days left. Go over to vetopropack.com, buy yourself a tool bag, or you can also go to one of my other sponsors, True Tech Tools. You can buy it over there and you still get the same promotion if you buy it from them because they are an authorized retailer of Vito. 
If you use the discount code uncensored, you can save 8% on your order. With that being said, on to the show. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. God bless the United States. And thank you to all those men and women who defend it. Welcome to the number one rated HVAC podcast. If you're looking to grow in the HVAC industry, then you're in the right spot. Blue collar people talking about blue collar shit. Let's get better together. So turn up the volume, buckle your seatbelt, and let's welcome your host, Gil KB Jr. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the HVAC Uncensored Podcast. I am your host, Gil KV Jr. Here we are, another Wednesday, another hump night, and another week of two podcasts. I'll be back here again Friday night, 8 p.m., for a special episode with my man, HVAC Slayer. Um, he is one of the ones that we had to reschedule uh, when I was moving, so that's why I'm doing it Friday. So make sure you're back here Friday. Um, I'm going to wait till the end of the show, so make sure you stick through. So the last time that I said I was going to try to make a vi- uh, a video for the veto bag, um, obviously I didn't have a chance to make the video a lot going on, but I did go through the random comment generator, and there is a winner, and it's somebody that's here all the time and um, who's actually won prizes for me before, but they did win it fair and square, so I will be reaching out to let you know at the end of the show, and I will let you pick uh, what bag that you want. And then I will be sending it out to you. All right. With that being said, guys, I have a, an awesome show tonight, man. Um, this is a friend that I met, uh, in AHR in Chicago. And, uh, it's the first time that we met and that we actually got to talking. We've been able, we've been staying in touch ever since Chicago. He's a very, very cool guy. Very smart guy. I, I got to be a guest on his podcast. It was very, very cool. You guys know that I like to be a guest on other shows sometimes. It's fun being able to just answer questions and talk and not have to worry about doing all the stuff in the background. And um, I I enjoy it. So I'm glad that he's finally on here. And um, this is not going to be one of those technical shows, but uh, it's going to be fun. You know, I I love these shows where you can cover different tasks. And I think we all learn something, kind of like some of the finance ones where people are asking questions And, uh, at the end of the day, you learn something. That's what I love about these kind of shows. And, uh, don't worry, we're going to get back to some technical things. I got some stuff going, but I've been really looking forward for tonight. And, uh, without further ado, guys, please help me welcome. Um, he is the chief marketing officer and co-founder of local. This is a digital marketing, uh, company that is made just for the trade. So guys, please welcome Mr. Zachary Wilson. What's up, buddy? We're here. <laughs> yeah, we have uh, we have a very short slash long history of te- technical difficulties getting our podcast live <laughs> for two uh, for two podcasters. That is, uh, you would think that this is a lot smoother, but uh, here we are. Yeah, it, it trust me, it, it happens. Th- this stuff stays set up. It doesn't get touched, and it's amazing how everything can go fine tonight, and I can come down here tomorrow to record something, and somehow something goes haywire. That's just the, it's just part of the part of the business that we do. But um, uh, once again, is this, it, go ahead. Yep, go ahead. I was gonna say, is this uh, what you're you're only doing a hand, a handful in your new studio, right? Whoa. Is oh, it? Yeah, uh, is this? Yeah, no. I want to say this is um. This is maybe like the seventh or eighth one that I've done because I, I had okay. a couple of weeks where I did multiple ones to try to make up for ones I missed. Um, right. Yeah. And the new studio is not even close to being done. I mean, it still looks good, but I have a whole nother section where people are going to come in and sit down that I haven't even had a chance to start yet. So. Yeah, you were showing me that on ours, the the tool table. The Is that what you're talking about? The trade table where you have the camera down? Is that what you're talking about? Or are you having like a lounge too? 
Oh yeah, like a lounge. So it, it's a. Whole oh, you have both. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you actually didn't show me that. Thing that's that's not even in this room. Um, and then I have a giant green screen that I have to put up. So I've been trying to hire, um some employees for the podcast. Like I've, I've built this as far as I can by myself. Like I just can't take it any further. And I think I said this on another show last week's show, it might've been. Um, and, uh, I'm getting to the point now where I, I had an editor for a little bit and I just wasn't happy with the product versus what I was paying. I was like, I can do this myself and it's free. Um, but I have to hire some people if I want to take this thing to the next level. So um, kind of in the process now, I'm very picky when it comes to hiring. Um, and if I'm going to allow them to be able to, to help me grow this. So, um, so far we'll, we'll see, but that, that has been the next step. Yeah, that, that could be a, uh, a tear down in itself. Uh, the first, you know, first employees when you're being a creator, like I, I guarantee there's content out that out there on that, but like. You know, you you know who the first hire is if you're uh, uh, if you're a contractor or an HVAC owner, right? Yeah. <laughs> you you know you know the cadence of building that up really well, as we learned from uh, the la- our podcast. But uh, yeah, the creator is like, is it an editor? Is it a, an an editor? Like you said, a video editor, uh, an editorial editor, a uh, uh, sponsorship person? Like, what what's your first thought there? Yeah. I mean, so- I, I would love, you know, to be honest, the audio, I have that, I have a system down pat where I don't even really need somebody to do the audio. Um, I'm more looking to be able to be like, Hey, I can send you video and that you can turn around in a timely manner. And, um, uh, so video edit, video editors yeah. is, yeah, yeah. Is, is well, I will, I'm looking. I will say that uh, we, we do, we do ours internally because of our, just our support, our staff in general, we have a lot of creators, if you will, uh, digital creators, uh, designers, et cetera, because of what we do. So we do it internally, but, um, there are a lot of people that don't have those and, and they, uh, they, they do really well, uh, with, with some of those, uh, with some, some outsourcing and offshore people doing that. You should, um, you know, who you should talk to, I think does a really good job with their, uh, social is, um, is Victor or Mike Mueller over at rocket. They do that, which is what they, their whole, their whole, uh, social team is, uh, is, is outsourced. Yeah. And, I, I had access. I mean, Victor's yeah. friend of mine. So I, I had access to, uh, that I just, and the reason I didn't do it was nothing. And, and Victor said, Hey man, you, you can have access to it. Um, and we mm-hmm. worked out a little deal and I ended up saying, eh, I don't want to do that mm-hmm. Only because I would really love. And I think maybe I'm asking for too much is I would love to have somebody local that I could work mm-hmm. with on a personal level, but I yeah. think that's going to be hard to ask for. Uh, my buddy, uh, Hughes man in here, um, He's uh, one of the hosts of the Misfits of HVAC podcast. I might actually reach out to him because he said that he would help. And I rather, oh, nice. at least I know him. I rather right. have a friend like that. So I haven't forgotten yeah. that comment, Ryan. Um, so I might actually be hitting you up, brother. So, uh, you know, something like that. So I don't know. We'll we'll, we'll see. But uh, it's definitely a business. And I mean, some of these other editors I've had, I mean, I'm talking, I was paying these guys like fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars a month. I mean, this wasn't yeah. chump change. Uh, no, it's, it's, it's very expensive and it's a very, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a trade and a, and a, and a craft and an art in itself. And it, you know, it demands top dollar, but maybe, maybe you could get like a, I don't know, like a, a college kid or a high school kid or someone that's just, you know, savvy and I don't know, scrappy or something. That would know. be amazing. It's, that that's what yeah. I'm looking for. Be like, Hey man, like I know I'm not the Joe Rogan podcast, but my podcast has reach. I mean, you know what I mean? Like you, you can put this on your resume as practice, make a couple bucks. It can help both of us out. Uh, yeah. I was hoping that my oldest son would want to get into it a little bit more, but my wife made a good point. She's like, well, why would he do that when she knows that you'll just give it to him for free? And I'm like, <laughs> well, he's got a, got a good point. So I guess I got to start cutting kids out of the will. I don't know. Um, yeah, but, um, Anyway, man, I guess let a little people know about you and exactly what you guys do out over at local. 
Yeah, great question. So uh, we're a marketing agency and um, I come off the heels of, I've been doing this for uh, 20 years now. And we, um, we had another company that was, um, we have another company too. Uh, I have a couple companies, uh, marketing agencies that's uh, not vertically aligned. Um, and we work with, uh, mid, the, in this space, it's mid-market companies. So 50 to 500 million is in revenue is kind of how we profile them. And, um, we wanted to, uh, this is a little while back, but we wanted to do something a little different, work with some smaller companies and bring our team and our skill set uh, downstream to some smaller companies. So now we're, uh, we're work we're in the vertically aligned, right? We're working with, uh, contractors, uh, HVAC, um, roofers, uh, plumbers, and uh, a few garage door companies and uh we're more or less under 10 million uh is kind of who we are targeting and what we're trying to bring to them is our uh our skill set from these larger companies again like up to half a billion dollars in all of the um marketing tactics and strategies that we used with those guys uh, to contractors, uh, to help them generate, uh, more revenue, uh, with marketing and continue to, um, build their businesses. And one thing that I would, that we're not, we're not the only one that does this, but there, there is a, there is a gap where we saw a gap in the market for a lot of contractors, uh, working with agencies where they're not getting the, the data um, and what we'll, what we'll call the, the, the data points and scorecards, which everybody likes to, likes to refer to in the, um, trades, right. Um, in terms of how their marketing is performing. So what we're really trying to bring is downstream, again, the smaller guys of contractors, um, more data in terms of what, you know, how much you're spending and how much you're making that. I mean, kind of that simple, but it's super, super complicated to get to that and to really get to a meaningful number. And, um, and, and the idea behind that is, is if, and everybody says this, if, you know, if I know that my dollar is going to make me a hundred dollars, right. Then instead of giving you a dollar, I'll give you a hundred dollars and then we can make $10,000. Right. And so on and so forth. And, 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 and you guys, I know Beltway has grown quite a bit. Um, and maybe you can, uh, sort of empathize with this a little bit is that I think with, uh, with some of the engagements, it's just kind of on autopilot and there isn't this, there isn't enough, um, accountability of, you know, what we're trying to do, what, what we're doing, what we're trying to do. And, what it's actually doing for the business. Right. And that's, that's where we're trying to bring again, our, our skills and our expect expertise from, um, from a prior life to contractors. So that's, it, that's kind of the skinny on it. And that's huge because, and I won't say names, but there's a lot of companies out there where it's like, okay, I give you $10,000. And then at the end of the month, it's like, well, Hey man, I was just wondering like, you know, how this went or what you're doing with this. And it's like, right. Oh, I, I, I can't tell you that. Like, what? Yeah. What, what do you yeah. mean? You can't tell me like I pay you to do this for me or like what, where did the $10,000 go? I mean, what, right. you know, so, and it gets kind of frustrating. And some of some of the names of these companies are ones that you wouldn't believe. And, but I, I'm, I'm not here to do that. That's not what I'm trying to do. But, um, I think it's like anything else that, when you're with somebody for a long time, I still think you should shop around just to keep people honest. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, uh, I mean, we hear it too. We get, uh, and you know, someday I'm sure I, I'm not going to pretend like we're holier than now. Um, you know, I'm sure there's, there's going to be a, we're going to come, come a day where someone's not going to be happy with us 
or something. Everybody deals with it. You guys deal with it. Yeah. Um, we deal with it. As, you know, other agencies deal with it. You can't. You can't make everybody happy all the time. Um, but it, but it is interesting the, the difference, especially with contractors uh, on the HVAC side, because it's 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 in. Uh, let's just take a an, an install, right? Like a new install, very straightforward, black and white. I have a system that doesn't work and, you know, hopefully within the day I'm plugging in a new system. It doesn't have any dust on it. It, you know, produces heat or produces cool air and it works. It's binary, right? It's either, it's, it's pretty much, it either works or it doesn't, you know, minus the repairs where you've got, you know, capacitor condenser issues, you know, blah, 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 whatever, a million different things that can go wrong, which our circuit boards, et cetera, which are a little more intangible to the customer where the customer, you know, can't see the capacitor you just replaced. I mean, you could show them, I guess, but, and I know some do, but generally speaking, those things are a little bit more, Oh, this thing, um, you know, cost me $800, but I don't really know what it is. But the reality is I don't really care because now my air conditioner is actually blowing cold air instead of warm air. Right. Like, and, and that's kind of, it, it's just hard to do that because again, like your customers, we, your customer, let's say me, right. The general customer of an HVAC, uh, company doesn't really know or understand what the hell it is you guys are doing. And we get the same thing every day where we'll talk about these things and, you know, guys like you or owners or marketing managers, whoever we're dealing with, their eyes will just glaze over and they'll just be like, honestly, I don't know what you're doing. I don't care. Is it, you know, are, am I making, is it making me more money? Yes or no? That's it. It's just yeah. that simple. Yeah, am I getting more phone calls? And it's just that simple. And, and the, the, the unfortunate part is, is it's, it's really freaking hard to show that and prove that because, you know, like there's, uh, every, a ton of different CRMs, house call pro service Titan, whatever, um, that, that store this data and that we have to get into. And it's just, it's, it's complicated and it's hard to do. And, and that's what happens at the low end for the smaller companies that, you know, you're, you're like, Oh, great. I'm only going to, you know, my $2,000 a month or my $3,000 a month that I'm spending on my marketing company. What happens is, well, the marketing company is probably really not making any money. And to do all of that work to show you the data or the numbers of what their marketing is actually doing, if assuming they're doing anything, it, it takes a lot of extra work and a lot of extra people to do it. And, um, they're either, you know, it's, it's kind of like the, the, the low end of a HVAC company, right? Like why can someone come in and undercut you? Well, they're, they're, they're probably not doing the job, right? They're not, they don't have the training in place. They don't have the personnel in place. They might not play their employees, uh, health insurance, you know, on and on and on. And so there, there is this, uh, there, there, similarly, there, 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 there can be a race to the bottom, but you obviously don't want to be in that race and cheaper isn't always better, just like in every other industry. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think that and you're 100% right. And for my thing is it's not like, and we're not one of those people where it's like every month, like where did every cent go? But Sometimes when right. you get used to a certain Some thing are. and you start to see a dip or something like that, then you just want to know why or to be able to ask a question, especially we spend a shit ton of money on marketing. Like we're talking about a lot of money. Um, so I just feel like it's building that relationship like anything else, how we build it with the customer. We're the customer. You build it with us. When I ask a question, it's just the answer you get. You know what I mean? And and right. how that comes off is what, what bothers me. But um Actually, getting away from that, and I've always wanted to ask this question um, whenever I've had somebody that does digital marketing for the trades like you on here is, especially when a tech hears, and maybe they're not the manager, the owner, they don't do this, but when they throw out marketing, 
Can you break down like exactly what all is inside of there? Like all those little things. And I know some is more than others, but you know, you don't got to go into great detail, but some of those, all those little things that make up marketing, you know, like PPC, I mean, SEO, all those kind of things. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we can just take one channel and break it down. Let's just take, honestly, let's take something that people really, really um, think is really easy. LSA, right? Some people call it Google guarantee. Excuse me. This, this beer is giving me the hiccups. Um, <laughs> uh lsa so we'll have a lot of people come in and be like you don't we don't you don't need to do our lsa there's nothing to do it's like okay sure if that's why you want to play it if that's how you want to play it sure but there there are um internally and other other agencies i know have processes to um if you will, uh, wet the whistle on LSA to light, light it up and keep it more active. Well, that's something that, uh, a small business owner is not going to appreciate because they're just like, Oh, I've, I've, I've turned it on. It's good. I don't need to do anything. It's like, okay, sure. Well, and then, well, we're not getting any leads from it. It's, okay. Well, inside the box of Google, just like everything else is it, it it's a game. And you have to play the game and, um, you know, uh, touch their certain touch points and light up their game, just like a pinball machine, right? Like you want to try and hit certain things in a pinball machine to get more points. Well, LSA is kind of the same way. And if you're going to set it and forget it, I will bet a lot of money that it is not doing anything for you. And it can be, it can, it can like, we have, uh, we have some clients that it's like their number one, uh, number one lead gen source. And, and, you know, and other people that are just like, you know, we're not getting anything from it. And it's because it's not being managed correctly because just like everything else, what your CRM, right? Like you guys are on service Titan. Like that has to be managed in a certain way and touched in a certain way or else, you know, it's, it's, if you put garbage in, you get garbage out and that's how LSA works. And that's a very, that's a very simple one. So, you know, you, we need, we need people personnel to manage it and touch that for clients to make sure that it's doing what it should do. And then PPC and SEO are insane. We, ha- we actually had a, SEO. SEO is a great one because this is a very hot button. What do you do? You care more about SEO or PPC? No, a, they're they're both. I mean, and you know, important as far as I'm concerned. But for, for uh, we're on House Call Pro, not Service Titan. Plus, they're a sponsor. Don't be getting me. Don't be getting me fired, there, Zach. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> it, it, it's all good. But I and you can. That's tell funny. Me, you're telling. I knew me they were all. a sponsor, but I thought you were on Service Titan for some reason. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, it's all good. Um, uh. But I always explain this to people and you tell me if I'm wrong is when it comes to, you know, LSA and when you're on there, people are, you want to be on the first page, the top three. Um, so people will contact you. Think about this. Everybody who shops on Amazon, we all do it. How many times do you buy something on the second page? Right. You, right. you don't. So when you search for something, you're scrolling down that first page and you rarely ever go to the second or third page. Well, customers are doing the same thing. When they search HVAC near me, they're looking at that first page. And guess what? If you don't make that cut, they're not picking you. That's how simple yeah. it is. That's how important it is. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, that, and, and the reality is, is that's, that's a combination of, for Google, it's a combination of three channels you have to be in. LSA. PPC and then SEO, local SEO. And so if you're just choosing, if you're choosing one of those channels or two of those channels, instead of all three, you're cutting down your chances of winning that customer's eyes, eyes balls by 33%, 66%, or, you know, you can be in there at a hundred percent. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's so freaking complicated. It's so freaking complicated, but on the, um, on the SEO side, you know, we were talking about this today because 
we 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 have we have a we have a a, a kind of a honestly we have a, a process problem internally with uh some of our seo and um want how it's being managed because seo right now as it's being sold in the marketplace to people like you is it's being sold as we have to just write a shit ton of content that's it period end of conversation and so what's happening is that agencies are going out there and writing a shit ton of content and I, I will actually put this out there for anybody if anybody has any questions about this, but um, they can DM me and I am happy to check out their website on this. But there are agencies out there that are doing this. They're writing, you know, 10, 5, 10, 15 blog posts a month using AI, either wholly or partially, putting those blog posts up so that they appear on the website. So you, as the as the business owner will go to the website and you're like, okay, yeah, my agency has done something great. I see new blog posts. Well, guess what? Google has gotten so savvy about this content that we're working on a study right now with just a bunch of random, um, HVAC companies. We found companies. I found one in Texas actually that they had, uh, about 150 pages on their website. Of those 150 pages, 99% of those pages are not being accepted by Google, meaning that the agency will write that post, put it on the website. So I go to the website, I see the post, great. But behind the scenes, Google has not even put that in their, their index. So Therefore, if you go to Google and you're like search, you know, this exact title in this with this, you know, branded HVAC company's name, it cannot be found. It literally cannot be found. And and we're going down the list and the the really good agencies and I know who they are and what they're doing. They'll be down in where where they're about five percent of the pages on someone's website are not being put into Google. So 95% are, and then the bad agencies and the bad websites can be anywhere from 60% to 99% of the pages that are on your website and literally not be found in Google. I believe if it. that makes, if, if that makes any sense. And it's because that that there's there's a match there's a mismatch in the marketplace of how agencies are selling SEO and what SEO is and SEO what SEO is is trying to improve keyword position in search what it is not is just putting up a bunch of garbage content on your website so back to my point earlier about what we're struggling with internally is that a part of SEO um, and somebody posted this today and I can't remember who it was actually part of SEO is actually your, the appearance of your website, how it looks and how, and, and not just like, you know, how pretty your logo is or whatever, but like, if you go to a service page, like, you know, let's just say beltway, you know, beltway, beltway airs, um, Baltimore location service page, right? I'm sure you have that page on your website. Mm -hmm. and, and how that page appears to me, the consumer, and how valuable the information is on that page to me, the consumer, for looking for, again, like your example, HVAC near me. Does it show a map of you know, the areas that you serve in, um, the neighborhoods that you serve in Baltimore, does it show your hours? Does it show team members that might be staffed specifically in Baltimore? Because that's, you know, maybe in that example, that's not your primary service area. So, so the, the, the point, the conversation we're having internally is this is called, I'm getting way too nerdy for you guys probably on this, but this is called something. This is ca called something that's called um, conversion rate optimization, also known as CRO. And what CRO is, is as part of SEO. But 
nobody talks about that. Nobody talks about the pay, the fact that let's say I could go to the Beltway uh, website and redesign your service pages, redesign, meaning lay, lay them out in a different way, put some new information on them. Let's say I'm going to put, you know, uh, some tech, some technicians faces on there with a tech profile and we're going to put some hours on there. We're going to talk about within Baltimore. We're going to talk about the neighborhoods that we serve. Um, we're going to put some pictures of, um, you know, um, uh, of, of Baltimore on that page. We're going to make it feel like if I'm a Baltimore resident and I go to that page and I see my neighborhood or, you know, a picture of a street in Baltimore, which is going to look very different than a street in suburban Baltimore, right? Very yeah. different. Those things matter to the consumer because it's like, oh, you actually work in my neighborhood. Like you have a picture of the row homes in Baltimore, not, you know, a suburban uh, like your house, right? Like, yeah, I know you're, you're in the suburbs somewhere. Um, you have a very suburban looking house. Like that's going to be a very different exterior than, um, you know, that of a, a down to a down to Baltimore house. And these are the little, little nuance things that really matter to the customers because the customers are smart. They're very smart. They understand we had, um, this was a different industry. This is actually one of our very early podcasts, but we were interviewing a, um, a, uh, outdoor construction company, uh, in Texas. And they were, this is a really interesting story for everybody, I think. Um, cause it doesn't matter. The industry doesn't matter, but, um, they were doing some really rapid expansion and they were growing and they started in Houston. They went to Dallas, they went to Austin and they were just, they were kicking ass and taking names and all of a sudden they're like, all right, we're going to, we're going to jump to Arizona. And they went to like, I don't know, Scottsdale or something like that. And they went to Scottsdale and they were like, copy paste everything that we've done. They bombed in six months bombed because they, it was a different buyer. There were different, you know, services that they were buying. They were different, you know, uh, stones that they were buying for their outdoor landscape, different, you know, uh, different pergolas, different, everything was different. The, the, the terrain was different in, in Scottsdale than it is in Dallas. Right. And so all their pictures and their marketing were using like homes in Dallas and landscaping in Dallas and, and it, and, and they couldn't get any traction. So they shut down, they, they expanded, they built a sales force and all this, and they shut down in six months because they couldn't get any traction. And it just go ahead. So I was saying, then that goes back to the point that I was trying to say earlier is that I think a bunch of these places sell generic bullshit. And that's the problem that I have. It's, you know, I'm one of those people that I firmly believe you get what you pay for. And if I was, you know, interviewing you and you're like, Hey, I'm not the cheapest guy in town, you know, and I got, you know, you give me $10,000, this is what I'm going to do with it. And maybe it's not as much some other people, but you do it's customized and it's really good. That's what I want. That's the same thing that we tell our customers. Hey, we're not the cheapest guy in town. May not be the most expensive, but we're towards yeah. the top. We try to do quality work over quantity. And I see all these people when it goes back to blog post, they'll put the same fucking blog post for, you know, a hundred different clients, the same picture of a house on a Can't website. Do it. Yeah. That's bullshit. Can't do it. And yeah, you I feel can't like do it, it happens. Like, and you look at our website, the pictures of our people, they're things that have really happened out in the field at a company party. They're real customers. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that we wanted to have because the generic stuff, it just, it, it gets old. And if I'm searching for a company and I guess there's no way of really knowing, I guess sometimes you could tell those generic photos. It just kind of, it kind of oh, turns sure. me off for like, sure. Yeah. They don't care enough to be authentic. Um, yeah. And I mean, and, and to be fair, you know, to be fair, there's, there's a, there's a market for everyone, right? Like if you're, you know, a, a new company in town and you're just starting up and you literally have like zero revenue, maybe that's, maybe that's a great starting point. Right. But 
if you're, you know, you've been around for 15, 20 years and you're really working on building, um, uh, you know, building your customer base and strengthening your brand and doing things like that. Like that's, that's, that's what you need. Right. And, and there is, there is a, there is a price, uh, associated with that. And I think the problem it, and it's, and it's probably the same, same thing that, uh, you know, you guys struggle with, I think for some agencies or a lot of agencies is like you, you, sometimes you, you want the business, right. As opposed to staying in your lane, working with your customer and the customer that's right for you and a good fit for you. They're trying to be everything to everyone. And that, that, that goes for the big agencies. Um, you know, laddering down to, you know, big agencies shouldn't be working with companies that are one to $2 million period. And they shouldn't, they just shouldn't, 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 shouldn't. If you, if you have clients that are whatever, fifty hundred million dollar clients, you should not be serving or taking on clients that are under 5 million because you're all of your, all of your, all of your processes and all of your staff is built for big time and you're going to underserve those clients, um, on the low end. And so, you know, you've got to, you've got to know who your audience is and you've got to know what you're doing, uh, for your audience. So I, I mean, I, I hear you, I hear you. And I think it's just, I think that sometimes people are just afraid to say no is, is the reality. No, you're, you're probably definitely right. Um, Another thing that I'm curious to ask is I get a lot of emails of that technician who says, Hey, I'm going to go, I'm going to go start my own company. Um, I've gotten tens of thousands of those emails over the last 10 years of podcasting. Um, and a curious question that I'll ask you as a digital marketing guy is, when should they start? Because obviously when you start, it's, you know, you're trying to get a truck and all this, like when should they start worrying about marketing? And then two, um, not to be afraid and you can never start too small. Yeah, that's a, that's actually a great question. Um, I think honest, my honest to God opinion is, is on SEO specifically uh, start as soon as you can, uh, start working on it and start building it because, um, it's going to make a big difference. And that investment upfront is gonna, uh, uh, assuming you're working with a, a good reputable company, um, start as, as soon as you possibly can. PPC, uh, little, little tougher, um, especially with all the money, uh, in the marketplace right now. Um, do you guys are, are you, I actually don't know in, uh, in your market, do you guys have any, uh, PE owned businesses? Uh, yes. And we, and people don't realize okay. the DC, the Baltimore DC Metro area, there's a lot of big players too. A lot of big guys. Yeah. Yeah. You don't go into DC, do you? Uh, not, we go around, not in yet, but that okay. is a uh, part well, of the plan. North, north, what? North, north, northwest. Yeah. So like technically right now I live 15 minutes from DC. Um, but we go probably all of the county surrounding. So pretty much almost all of Maryland getting into more Southern and we'll go around the, the outskirts of DC, like, uh, Tacoma Park, um, a bunch of, a bunch of the out, like the, the, I guess that would be northern. suburbs, really. I mean, yeah, right. Suburbs. Up yeah. Sub DC actual, suburbs. Yeah. In, in DC, DC yeah. proper. And the funny thing right. is people don't realize. I wouldn't, I wouldn't touch DC if I were you. <laughs> yeah. But the only thing is Baltimore and DC being so close, the markets could not be more different. Right. right. They are night and day different. Like that system that you sell for $15,000 in Baltimore is $25,000 in DC. Well, the, I mean, I mean, also, I mean, you don't have the same, I mean, you've got such a different home style in DC. I, I mean, I, I would imagine the cost is just, just justified in, 
in terms of uh, how it's rigged and some of those and some of those old, I mean, the, the properties are, you know, turn of mo- so many turn of the century properties. I mean, you're just dealing with some really, really, really tough situations. So that doesn't, I mean, that doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah. No. Uh, and in, in the city, I, we, to be honest, we, we try to stay out of Baltimore city um, just because statistics. Uh, so we'll go around, but a lot of times you go in, it's a lot of the landlord tenant situations, which end up mm-hmm. being a pain in the ass, uh, yeah. parking tickets, you know, and yeah. DC is even worse. It just, it doesn't right. make sense, but sometimes there's no way to not do it. You know what I mean? It, it's so we, we try to, we try to pick and choose, but I didn't mean right. to what you were saying before. No, 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 no. It was a, uh, it, it was a, it was an open question. And, and uh, so the, the answer, the answer is on, 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 on paid and, and, and even social is it, it, it really depends on your market. I mean, we've got, we've got people all over the country and we've got, you know, we've got some clients um, just as an example that we can't, they're, we can't get them into the auctions. So that's what, uh, that's what Google ads is. It's, a, it's just a giant auction, right? Like who will pay the most money for HVAC near me to rank, right? I mean, that's, you know, it, one guy is willing to pay $50 while another guy is paying, willing to pay 125, right? I mean, yeah. that's, that's all it is. That's how they, that's how they show. And we have clients that we, that don't have big enough budgets and we can't even get them into the auction for, to appear because they've got some really, really big players, which is why I answered that question on the PE side that are just throwing endless dollars, um, at, uh, at Google to, you know, get that visibility. So, um, so anyway, the, 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 the unfortunate answer is it, it really depends. It depends on your market. It depends on who you're working with. Um, I, I will also say this, there's, um, there's a lot of, uh, Google ads is, is a very, very, very complicated system and who you're working with or who your, your, your PPC person is that you'll probably never meet, (laughs) right? Mm -hmm. Like the person that manages your paid ads, you know, someone behind the scene of the agency, hopefully they're, um, you know, not a, uh, an offshore person. Um, has to be really good and know what they're doing because if you don't you will piss away buckets and buckets and buckets of money with no results and that's where i think you 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 as the you know as a contractor um or business owner whoever's doing it needs to do your homework and you you know ask for referrals what oh oh yeah you referred me uh this agency they're great Okay, well, sure. That take that for what it's worth, but you know, ask the questions. Well, are you are you doing SEO with them? Are you doing PPC with you, them? What are you what is your monthly spend because, you know, some some somebody could ask you who you use for PPC and you could say, you know, blah blah blah, they're great and they're amazing and I love what they're doing. But the person that asks you might be in like Tulsa, Oklahoma and only have like a $500 a month budget, right? Well, it's like, that's not going to be a good, that's most likely not going to be a good fit. You guys are like apples and oranges. So, um, so just, just like everything else you do, you do have to, you know, reach out to your network, get some referrals, do your homework, meet with people and ask for, um, ask for references and ask for case studies and, um, and, and, and look at, you know, what, what results people are getting. What's the, um, you know, there's this thing it's called return on return on ad spend, right? Like what is your return on ad spend? If I'm spending for every, for every thousand dollars I'm spending, how much am I making? Well, if someone can't answer that question, you damn well should not hire them. And, you know, why another one is like, this is a really, I love to tell people this too. This is a really easy one, right? For anyone that doesn't, or just wants to know your marketing costs. I think I, I think I challenged you on this let on our podcast, which is like, what, are, what are your marketing costs? This is a really, really, 
easy exercise. So go into uh, whatever you're using for your accounting, whether it's QuickBooks, uh, Service Titan, whatever, and look at what your advertising costs are for we're at the end of May, right? So advertising, run a report. How much did I spend? I spent thousand, five thousand, ten thousand, twenty thousand, fifty thousand, whatever. And then look at how much you made. Well, that's the and it, it just divide those two numbers by one another, and you can figure out how much it costs you to acquire your customers. So if you spent ten thousand and you made a hundred thousand dollars, your your customer, which would be amazing, um, your customer acquisition cost is going to be ten dollars a customer, right? Which is would be unheard of, but so that's a bad example. But um, <laughs> more like it's going to be a, a probably more about a hundred dollars. But um, but those are the things that you need to just understand, and you don't need you don't need an agency to figure that out. You don't need an agency to figure out how much money it costs you to acquire customers because here's a good question for you guys. I don't actually don't know the answer. Do you guys do uh traditional? Do you do billboards, flyers, all that stuff? Uh we don't do as much any of that. Billboards. Every once in a while we do uh we still do some mailers and flyers, but it, it it's limited. And the only billboard we would do, we're looking for a new location and if we could cut some of, you know, some of the marketing money could go towards that, then we would do it, but probably not traditional billboards. Um, some people still do. Uh, we, we, we don't, um, maybe at some point, but we haven't seen the need or the value right now. Yeah. I mean, it, it, you know, it, it, it totally, I mean, it totally depends. I mean, you hear these stories all the time of, it's just a function of, it's just a function of work, what's working. I mean, it, again, in some markets, people there, uh, I've heard of people that they don't do any digital marketing. All they do is flyers. They've gotten so good at flyers in their market and they understand their market so well, they just do flyers. And then you've got guys that are just radio guys. Um, I met a guy down in uh, Southwest, Southwest Texas, down by the border. Um, all he does is uh, TV commercials. That's it. That's all they do. He's the 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 big face in the area. Um, I think it's a uh, uh, hundred hundred and twenty five thousand people, and all they do is commercials, TV, old school TV commercials because of um, their market. It's a you know it's a sort of I think it's a, a middle to lower middle class. Um, uh, ethnic market, mostly Mexican, right? Because they're, they're right on the border, and so their their you know their consumption of media is still very traditional, and it works. They're like a they're like a twenty five thirty five thirty million dollar company just doing commercials, right? And so it, I mean it just depends. And I mean what I the, going back to something you said earlier, which I think gets lost on um, our customers a lot, and what what is marketing and what is market marketing is a, uh, really a bunch of tests. That's it. So you, you like, you put up a billboard and you see if it does anything for you, you've got to run billboards for a long time to figure that out. But that's how, that's how paid advertising is. That's how SEO is. That's how social media is. And you basically, it's like, uh, it's like fishing, right? You put up, put a bunch of lines in the water well, I'm going to test whether the fish are biting over here, over here, over here, or over here. One of them, hopefully one of them is going to bite. Well, that's, that's what marketing is, right? And you've got to put a bunch of lines in the water to figure out which channels, which tactics um, are going to, are going to work for you. And, you know, and you've constantly got to, got to sort of repeat. So um, when something's working for you, you, keep doing it until you see, you know, degradation and whatever that is. And then you try something new and, you know, it's like, like you mentioned, um, this was something I want to touch on earlier. You mentioned, uh, people get frustrated with, um, you know, well, there's a dip. Well, why is there a dip? And I think the, on the agency side, right. Whoever you're working with, 
um, and this is a general problem, is that people are afraid to report those dips because like, okay, well, there was a dip in performance. Well, why? And like you said, you just, you want to know the why, right? Like you're, I'm sure you can cite an example in the last month where you had some repair or some install and there was a problem. Yeah, sadly. Right. there, it, It happens, but it happens in everything. We're not perfect. And the, 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 the remedy for that is communication and transparency. You don't, you don't, you don't run away from the homeowner and try and hide that. Like, you know, the, 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 the install mixed up the red and the blue wires, whatever, um, you know, or installed something backwards or, you know, the equipment was bad or whatever. You don't want to hide that. You want to, you want to get in front of it and communicate with them. And, you know, nine times out of 10, you're going to get the customer that is understanding they're, they're empathetic and you're either you're going to, they're going to give you the opportunity to fix it. Everybody, I, well, maybe not, but do you got, I mean, most businesses will have a one or one or one or two star reviews, right? Yeah. And you're going to, you're going to get those one in 100 that are just, you ran into that problem and that person, that customer just sucks. Like they don't want to give you the chance. And you know, it's, it's unfortunate, but it's, 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 it's going to happen. I mean, it's just, it's going to happen. So yeah, that's why we always tell our customers, everybody makes mistakes. It's how you make it right. And I make sure that customers know, Hey, I- I'm sorry that this happened, but I reset the expectation with them. This is how we're going to make this right. We're going to do this, 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 and this. And people are like, Oh, that's awesome. Um, so it's, it's like anything else. One thing I want to say this far, I forget because I will, is also some forms of marketing don't work. It's not immediately because we did radio and I mean, I'm talking like $250,000, $300,000 worth of radio. And wow. And it was like, man, why is this not working? And then all of a sudden we stopped doing radio, like our, our plan ran out and we were like, Hey, this cost a lot of money. And then all of a sudden it was like, and it was like, Holy shit, this, this really did work. Um, yeah. You know, well, like, that, that's a tough one media. because it's yeah. Right. Right. Like Bill, I mean, that's the, that's one of the, I mean, going back to your earlier question about like, when should you start that stuff? Like we, we call that awareness marketing and brand building. Right. And the general the general formula is you need minimum 12 months to two years to reach an impact on that. That's how, that's how slow we are as humans to respond to um, that type of marketing. But, and, and so you, you, and I don't know if this was the case for you when you bought all that media or not, but a, 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 a good agency and, just as a disclaimer, we do not do any of this, but I know this, a good agency will be very transparent and say, you need 18 months. You need to budget for 18 months to 24 months of constant radio and constant TV or billboards to actually have a lasting effect for brand building, which is why you don't start that until you're, I, I, I generally say that for real brand building, you're probably in the 20 to 20 to $30 million range before you can really start pushing it. Some people get to 10 and they start to, you know, play with one or two billboards here and there, um, which, which you can do. It's, it's going to have limited impact, obviously, because if you only have one or two billboards up, right, it's, you're only going to get so many eyeballs on those billboards. Um, And, and same with radio, right? It's, you're only going to get so many impressions, but, um, but that, that, that's a really, that's a really tough one to implement and you do really have to be patient and you do really have to get big. But, um, yeah, I heard something today on a, um, Facebook live where there was an owner talking and he, he said, 
you know, the number, the number one, the number one thing you should focus on from an expense perspective is your sales and your marketing, because you're nothing without leads and your lead generation and the ability to sell on those leads is it, it's the, it's the make or break, right? Like if you don't have any leads, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to sink. And if you don't have good people to follow up with those leads and actually convert those leads, you're also going to sink, right? Yeah. You're just going to, you're, you're just going to drown in, 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 in poor conversion. So, um, I, I don't know why I had never really thought about that, but I thought that was kind of, um, obvious, but also pretty smart to think about that that way. Yeah. And, and I will say this and I won't say the name of the company, um, but they are one of the best at what they do. And I think that we did it too early. So I agree with being a bigger, bigger company, but, um, their, their but guidance was for good. transparency. Where, where are you, where were you guys in your revenue arc at mm, the time? Probably like four and a half, five million. Um, yeah. so, you know, that kind of money, that's, that's not jump change, you know, no, that, that, that's, that, big. that's a big gamble. It's a big risk. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it, it, it was definitely, it was definitely rough, but it, it, it's a learning lesson, you know, what, 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 what are you going to do? Um, but I mean, and like I said earlier, it's, mar that's part of marketing. Like you got to test some things and you live and you learn. And sometimes it's going to cost you some serious coin to learn those things. Yeah. And what works for the guy down the street may not work for you or what works for the guy in California doesn't work for the guy in Baltimore. So it's, it's definitely different. There's not a one size fits all that that's for damn sure. Um, right. If it was that easy. Then we, we'd all be doing the same exact thing. Um, you know, so. Uh, that's a, let me just interject one more time because that was something that you asked about earlier in terms of like, um, when, you know, when to hire and what you're hiring for. And I think part of the process of hiring an agency, if you will, is, is meeting with them, right? Of course, but it doesn't have to be face to face, but just having a, a video meeting with them and listen to some of their ideas and thoughts, i.e. create creativity on how to adapt to your, your company, right? And your brand and your culture, because you talked about it earlier, is that, um, you know, you cannot, you ever, we can't, we can't have this, like, it's, it's like the, it's like the white van plague, right? Like we can't have, you can't have white van plague on your marketing, because if you're saying the exact same thing, that everybody else is, and you're doing the exact same thing as everybody else is in your market, especially, uh, you're going to blend in with the crowd and there's not going to be any distinction between you and the guy down the street. And, um, and one, one more thing uh, on this that I didn't touch on, which is a big, um, a big no, no in your interview process for anybody listening, or, um, everybody listening, <laughs> anybody, anybody out there. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, ask this one very important question. Are you servicing anyone else in my market? Very, very important because there are a lot of agencies that will double dip. And you think that Gil's problem with, uh, your, do we talk about this online or offline? I don't remember, but, uh, you know, seeing the same content on your website as oh. someone else's website is a problem. Well, if that, 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 that's a problem. Yes. But it, you know, if there's no, but that's a problem. Yes. Period. I mean, conversation, it's not as big of a problem if it's, you know, uh, in, in Maryland at, and happening in California, but if it's in, uh, your backyard and, uh, you know, the, you're competing with a guy down the street and an agency is managing both of those accounts. You're fucked. You're fucked. And 
Um, it's, and it, this is a hot button issue for me, to be honest. And I, I, I don't want to go off on too much of a tangent, but like, this is the biggest no, no in the agency world. It is, it, it is, um, I don't know what the equivalent of, uh, it, I know what the equivalent of the, in the HVAC world is. It's walking into somebody's house and selling them, uh, a unit that is too big for their house. That's, 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 that's basically, that's basically, it's unethical. It is it's very unethical. Worse. And just so you not to interrupt you, just so you know, and I won't say these names as much as I want to so bad. I love, uh, can we, can we do a drinking game for how many times you've said that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, you, you gotta be careful, especially <laughs> as a podcast gets bigger, as much as I try to keep it as uncensored as possible. Um, sometimes I gotta be careful saying you get, names you're getting them. soft. You're getting soft. You I'm used, not trying you to get used sued. To, that's that, that's <laughs> the problem. Uh, you um, used to you used to just call it how it is. I know I've been listening for a couple of years. <laughs> and and I still will, but mentioning some people's names, I do have to be careful. And this one I I'm, definitely I know. have to be careful. Um is for exactly what you just said. It wasn't a marketing company, but it was in the realm of what we've been talking about. And they actually had three clients in the same service area. Yep. And, and that was a huge problem. We were like, yep. Hey man, what the F like we give you a lot of money and yet you're working with, and it wasn't even just the same company. It was the same, like, I gotta be careful how I say it. Um, let's just say director of this little crew that works under a bigger umbrella that was literally taken care of three companies and we were one of them and we compete against the other two. And it was just like, yeah. what the hell is going on? You know what I mean? It, again, it's just this, it's these companies, uh, uh, you know, uh, grow, 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 uh, hit your numbers, hit your numbers. And, and they're afraid to say no. I mean, that, that, that's just, that's the reality. And, and they don't, I, I will say at the, at the, this, this is a thing at like, and I'm talking like billion dollar company level. They have these things called like, uh, you know, walled gardens or Chinese wall where, um, you can have a very, very big company and they will, um, they will be able to take on clients within certain same verticals, like healthcare is a, a great example. Uh, and the company's name, I don't, and I'm sure no one's heard of this, but it's called like Publicis is like massive, massive marketing company. And they, the way they got so big was they created processes internally so that they would create these teams that could only work on, you know, they could work on, uh, I don't know, like Pfizer and like Johnson and Johnson on this, you know, within the, you know, the, the, the COVID vertical is the only thing I can think of, you know, and they could have, and they create these basically like walled gardens or Chinese walls where all of the information is in a black box for team one and all the information is a black box for team two. And somehow, somehow they convinced the marketplace that these were such, you know, tight walled gardens that they were able to take on multiple clients um, like that, but I, I can guarantee you that does not exist in, in this industry. <laughs> Guaranteed. Yeah. yeah, no, <laughs> the companies uh, are I, just not big enough and sophisticated enough. Yeah, no, uh, I bet. Well, damn Zach, we, we are an hour and 15 minutes, man. It goes by so fast. That's why I said, man, it, it's crazy. You blink an eye and it, it's gone. Thank God I have this giant clock in front of me or I would definitely, definitely forget. Clearly it's not working very well. Either that yeah. or you've, uh, you've had, you've had a too, uh, too many, you know, what? Yeah, no, I, it was a good conversation, man. So I don't like to, uh, to, to interrupt it, but sadly it does have to come to an end. Zach, I want to thank you for coming on, man. I appreciate for you, thank you having me on your, your podcast. I think we had a great, great conversation. Um, anybody out there in the world that is looking for digital marketing services, this, that does not yet have somebody, how can they get in touch with you, brother? Uh, local Zach on Facebook or Instagram and, um, uh, local HQ, uh, dot com also. And, uh, then I will say, uh, just a quick plug for, uh, our podcast, um, the boost where we, where we talk weekly with owners, uh, like Gil 
and uh, talk about their stories through sale, through selling, buying, selling, and um, succession. So that's all we talk about. And we're just, we're out there looking for owners uh, that have been involved in buying, selling, and uh, succession. So family succession is a big one. Um, buying, we have uh, private equity people, lawyers on, um, uh, brokers, and then uh, people like Gil that started off in their, you know, working, uh, working for their, their parents and c- coming up through the trades and, you know, becoming a, a, an equity owner in, um, in their business. So we're, we're out there just trying to share those stories and help everybody understand how you get from one place to another and potentially buy or sell your business. So it's a really fun, fun and interesting conversations. Yeah. And, and definitely uh, go back and look, you'll see that I was uh, a guest on his show. Um, he's had, um, that was just last week, right? It came out. Was it this yeah. week? Yeah, I want to say it, it just came out. Uh, we recorded it a little while back, uh, but definitely yeah, go. It gets go, very go. confusing. We won't see ourselves for another month. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> like you guys know, like I'll record this, but this audio won't go out for another three, four weeks. So that's kind of the way the way it works. Um, but if you're looking for marketed service, um, obviously go check out my buddy Zach here at Local. Zach, thank you so much for coming on, buddy. I appreciate you. Thank you. Appreciate you. Let's start closing this thing out. Thank you, everybody, for being here. I really, really appreciate you guys. Sorry about being a little little late tonight. I know you guys bust my balls, but you guys do it all in good fun. And the fact that you guys are here all the time, um, I really, really do appreciate that. So this is funny. So the last time I did uh, with the veto bag and I said that I would do the video, um, my daughters and my my wife were actually in here. So if I need to make a video confirming um, – you know, who, who won? Um, you know what I mean? I, I can definitely do that, but, uh, I'm actually going to give away two things tonight. Um, one is just random, just something that I want to do the other one, but the last giveaway that I did funny, the winner is Mr. Sammy, dude, Sam has won more stuff from anybody, but Sam won fair and square. I actually did, uh, the random comment generator thing, uh, four times and Sam, uh, was three out of the four times. And, uh, so Sam, you have won the blacked out video MCT bag. Uh, Sammy won. If I was going to rig, would I pick the person who gives me the most shit? Um, but yeah, Sammy, Sammy won, man. Uh, so congratulations, Sam, you are the winner, my friend. Uh, but I have a a bunch of other things to give away. Um, Sam, I already have your address. I'll put your other gift that you won from before inside of that bag, uh, when I send it to you. But, uh, I don't know if Sam is still here, but Sam just reach out to me, buddy. Uh, just to confirm that you saw this, but Sammy is, is the winner, Mr. Sam Andrew. And, um, the other person that I am going to give something to and, um, this is not somebody that, uh, yes, yeah, Sam. Hey man, the algorithm likes your name, my friend. So, uh, it's a blacked out, uh, tech MCT bag. It's actually the same one that I, uh, got for Mr. Jason Johnson is what you want, my friend. Um, but I'm also going to give something. I always joke uh, about this person always being the first one in here, Mr. Um, Freon Leon and, I have this little, it's a tech, it's a veto tech bag and I don't, it's in my garage right now, but Mr. Uh, Leon, email me your address again. And I'm pretty sure you're one of the winners of the the other thing too. So I can just put that in there because I had to buy new ones. Um, I'm going to send you that bag, man, for being the first person in here. I can't even count how many weeks that you have been the first person in here. So just as a thank you and to tell you that I appreciate you, I'm going to send that bag to you and um, I will post some pictures of it. I have a bunch of different things to give away, guys. I apologize that I've been so behind. Moving into this house has been a shit show, just to be quite frank with you. Um, I have been off this week trying to take a little break, trying to get this house, you know, together and everything set up, moving an hour away. I thought I had all this stuff planned, but, um, it's been a lot. So 
With that being said, I have more stuff to give out, so hang in there. I thank all of you for being here. And obviously, I want to make sure the people that win are the people that are in here supporting me every single week. So um, I appreciate you guys. So congratulations to Mr. Freon Leon, and congratulations to Mr. Sam Andrews. I appreciate you guys. Um, yeah, my son does got to be around the house. So if you guys don't know, Mr. Patrick O'Farrell and Zachary, Zachary P is my nephew. So the one that I said, uh, picture at the Naval Academy, uh, that is my nephew, Zachary. And Mr. Patrick is a friend of my nephews and my son. Uh, so that's who they're talking about. Tyler, my, my namesake piece of lazy piece of shit. But, uh, now I love the kid. Let me see, Gil. I need that. Ha hey, this is, um, uh, HVAC Tactical. So if you go to uh, support my buddy Ben, HVACTactical.com, you can use the discount code HVAC Uncensored. No. Um, oh, there's my buddy boy. Hey, Tyler. Love you, son. Uh, he knows I'm just busting his balls. But um, uh, yeah, if you go use the discount code uh, HVAC Uncensored, it's like 20% off. Um, I don't know if he still has it live. He did that a long time ago. I talk to Ben all the time. He hasn't said anything about taking it down so um yeah go go check that out uh, i am in the process of trying to get my merchandise stuff done jimmy what is up my man um i gotta call you back jim i'm sorry i mean uh jimmy i'm sorry bud i've been off this week man it's been crazy um but i didn't forget you i still love you buddy um, i haven't answered really anybody's phone calls this week um but yeah, I'm, you know, now, you know, my oldest son, Tyler is working for beltways in the trade. Um, I'm trying to make some videos that are going to be educational for him. You know, me teaching him add another element to the, to the podcast, to the videos with him. Um, also him learning at the same time. So I am pretty excited about that. Obviously I just bust his balls, but he's my, my boy. Oh shit. Uh, Jim, I, I have not, Jimmy, I haven't been at the office, bud. I, I won't be back till next week. So they'll, they'll save it for me. And when I see what it is, I will let you know. Um, but with that being said, the winners, uh, even though I already have your info, Sam, please guys email me again, just so it's at the top info at HVAC uncensored.com. Just so some of you know, the HVAC Uncensored at gmail.com is slowly going away. All of those emails should be forwarded to the email um, info at HVAC Uncensored.com. Not all of them are going over. Okay. So I just want to let you guys know. But thank you guys for being here. Thank you to my moderators, Rookie, for everything you did tonight, man. I appreciate you for always being there. Mr. Jason Johnson, Jimmy on HVAC Teacher, who came in a little late. Uh, thank you guys. I appreciate you. Um, but let me not get long winded and start closing this out. We're already late. Um, <coughs> coughing guys, remember to be safe out there. We all have somebody to make it home to. I keep looking at the wrong camera. Um, we all have somebody to make it home to make it home the same way that you left. All right. Like I always say, I don't care if it's driving, keep your head on a swivel, make sure the breakers turned off, make sure you're walking, you're wearing the proper PPE, uh, you know, all those little things to protect yourself. Uh, we love what we do, but it's not worth your life. Okay. Make sure you stay hydrated going to the summer months. The water you drink today is for tomorrow or the day after. Okay. You can't drink water the day of and think that you're not going to get dehydrated. Uh, try some of the electrolyte drinks, whatever it is, please make sure that you are staying hydrated, especially in the summertime. Do not be putting shit in your body and expect to be out there being a rock star. All right, skip the McDonald's, skip the fast food, skip the bullshit. Try to put some good stuff in your body, plenty of fluids so that you all can stay okay out there. All right, especially in some of you Southern places where it's way hotter now than it is here. We'll get hot soon. We're not there yet. Um, so just please, please be careful. I do not want to see anything happen to any of my HVAC brothers and sisters out there busting their butt. All right. Remember to do the little things, man. Set yourself apart from the next guy or girl. All right. Give back to the trade. If you know something, help the people you work with, help teach them something. If you're learning, ask questions, put, listen to a podcast, read a book, a YouTube channel. There's so much information out there nowadays to say that I don't know is not an excuse because we have so much information at our fingertips. 
It's there for the taking. Whether you take it or not is up to you and only you. All right? I wish all of you nothing but the best. And until next week, I love you, mofos. See you Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, back here with my buddy, Mr. HVAC Slayer. Thanks for listening to the HVAC Uncensored Podcast. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Instagram or email us anytime at HVACUncensored at gmail.com. Now, get back to work. Shut this down. The views and opinions shared on the HVAC Uncensored Podcast may not necessarily be the views and opinions of our sponsors or guests. You ain't got to go home, but you got to get the fuck out of here.